Hello? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Klotz. I'm a dev lead for Hulu for the Apple team. Uh, we work on both the iOS and the tvOS apps. And today, I'm going to talk about how we use Fastlane and Jenkins to automate our CI CD pipeline. And yes, that is my uh, official Hulu photo. You can ask me about that later. Uh, first, I wanted to give some credit to a couple other hooligans, Jeremiah Johnson on the left and Bryce Horwood on the right. Uh, both of these guys have put in loads of effort getting this to work. To use a football analogy, uh, if I brought the ball out to the 30, these are the guys who put the ball in the end zone. So, CI, CD is good. I think that's something that we can all agree upon. Certainly in this room, that's a pretty uncontroversial statement. It allows your dev teams to move faster. It catches the dreaded, it works on my machine error. Reduces instances of, I just pulled and now my code doesn't compile. And of course, a multitude of other health benefits. Now just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, I wanted to put up a couple definitions that I'd found on ThoughtWorks uh, that, that I liked. Uh, continuous integration is a development practice that requires developers to integrate code into a shared repository several times a day. Each check-in is then verified by an automated bill. Continuous deployment refers to the release into production of software that passes the automated tests. Now, the iOS community has been somewhat slow to adopt these development principles, uh, but in fact, continuous integration has been around for a while uh, in iOS. Uh, and doing a little bit of research for this uh, talk, I found a 2009 blog post by Michael Nackbauer called How to Automate Your iPhone App Builds with Hudson. In this, he talks about unit tests, automated builds, app store uh, packaging on the build server, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, concepts that were already gaining wide acceptance in other circles, but in the iOS world, this was pretty out there stuff. In 2003, this notion got the official blessing from the mothership when bots were announced at Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. Uh, I've heard they're great. Uh, I am sure that there are threes of people using them right this very instant. Uh, the important point here, though, is that in 2003, continuous integration had gained a certain level of acceptance in the community. Uh, so basically, at this point, even iOS has come around to the notion that CI is good. There is, however, a problem. The problem is, uh, if you are an iOS developer, Steve does not want you to have continuous deployment. Uh, now, before I go any further, I just want to caveat one thing I'm not going to talk about is enterprise deployment. Uh, we actually don't use an enterprise developer account. Uh, it's something that we've looked into, just never really had the time to do. There's some improvements in test flight which mitigate some of the need for it. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna talk about are probably applicable, but uh, since we don't have one, I, I can't say for sure. Anyway, Steve does not want you to have continuous deployment. The App Store review process makes this literally impossible. Uh, anyone who's ever released an iPhone app here is probably familiar with this. For those of you who aren't, uh, you must abide by Apple's rules. They are the ultimate gatekeeper. You must go through their review process. Internal builds and test flight uh, have a, a slightly lower bar, but even here, there is no API to connect to iTunes Connect or, or to test flight. So what do we do? Enter Fastlane. Fastlane is a suite of tools that allows you to automate most, if not all, of your app delivery pipeline. And it allows us to do true continuous deployment, sort of. Uh, there's actually a lot of good stuff in Fastlane, even if you're not doing CI, CD. Uh, it can handle signing, it can handle certificate management, it can create uh, App Store screenshots for you. So if you're doing any sort of iOS or tvOS deployment, I would definitely check it out. So what does CI, CD look like for the Apple team at Hulu? Well, we use Jenkins, obviously. I wouldn't be here right now otherwise. Uh, it's a pretty standard setup. We have a master that sends jobs off to two or three slaves. We use GitHub Enterprise working out of a single repository for both iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV apps. 
We use GitHub pull request builder, uh, the pull request builder plugin to ensure that tests are run with every pull request. Uh, these have to pass before it can be merged. You can see here, tests have failed, the merge button is grayed out. When the pull request uh, is merged, tests are run again, and again, if the build fails, uh, if, if they fail, then the build fails. To automate the running of tests, we use Fastlane's scan module. So a scan has a pretty simple configuration. Uh, this is the actual config for our iOS app. tvOS looks more or less the same. Uh, specifying an output file will let you write out a test report, which looks a little bit like this. In actuality, if we're trying to debug something, we'll probably just use the jobs console output, which shows the results of each test. Scan uses Xcode build, which is essentially the uh, command line version of Xcode, uh, and it runs a command that is essentially this. Now, if the test passed, the next step is to build and package the app. For this, we use Fastlane's Jim module. Uh, Jim handles build configuration, incrementing build numbers, setting version numbers, uh, and passing build time flags, uh, such as showing a developer menu or forcing the app to run on a, on a stage environment. So right now, we're actually uh, doing signing by providing the appropriate certificates to the build server. Very soon, we're going to switch over to using a couple other fast lane modules that should allow us to automate this step as well. So similar to scan, Jim also uses Xcode build, uh, running this command to build the binary. So at this point, uh, I've shown a couple of commands that are more or less what Fastlane is running when we run their modules. So it's reasonable to ask, if all this is doing is wrapping Xcode, well, why bother? Well, of course, we're iOS developers, so we, uh, we love our ecosystems, and we might naturally gravitate to something like this. But I think there's more value than just uh, assuaging our, our natural desires. If I'm going to create a build step to do what I've just shown, uh, I'm going to need something that looks a little bit like this. And actually, it's probably going to be a little bit messier because I've, I've left a couple steps out. With Fastlane, I turn that into this. So beyond just looking a lot less messy, the configs minus the three lines up here are now kept in source control in the same repository as the source code itself. Another advantage is that developers can actually run these locally if they want. So the final step in our process, the CD part, is to upload the app to test flight. And for this, we used Fastlane's pilot module. Now up to this point, uh, while useful, there's nothing that we couldn't have done by writing our own scripts if we'd really wanted to. But with pilot, we can do something that seems a little bit magical. Before Pilot, in order to upload to test flight or iTunes Connect, you either had to build on Xcode and submit manually, or at best, take the app package off Jenkins and then manually upload this. With Pilot, I just simply add one more uh, line to my build step and a little bit of extra configuration. And that automatically uploads the build. Now remember, I'd mentioned before, there is no public API for iTunes Connect or test flight. So you can't do this just by using scripting and, and the out-of-the-box uh, Xcode tools. After builds are uploaded, uh, there's a short processing step on Apple's end. And when that's finished, it's immediately available to our iTunes Connect users. Now, unfortunately, this is capped at 25 accounts. What we've done is create a few group accounts that allow stakeholders and C-levels to get immediate access if they want. Uh, Please don't mention that to Steve. He does not like that. Uh, there is a manual step involved to releasing to a larger group. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to automate that soon. But even still, that would require a lightweight review process. So we're not quite doing true CD in that the app isn't going into full production. Uh, but we are getting about as close as you possibly can on this platform. Um, so I've simplified a lot in this talk for the sake of time. Uh, I wanted to just sort of give people a quick look at what the actual build steps that we have. Uh, this is for our tvOS app. Uh, this calls a script, which I've also slightly simplified to pull out some of the platform targeting. But it's essentially this. We, uh, we are calling the same Fastlane commands that I've just gone over before. 
So that actually relies on a configuration file called a fast file. That's obviously way too long for me to go over right now, but I'm happy to answer any questions out in the hall afterwards. So I've glossed over a lot here, and uh, there's no blog post at this point, at least. So if you do want to find out more about how we're getting this all to work, uh, come talk to me while I'm here, or you can email me at david.klotz at hulu.com. Thank you all.